All right. Uh, I'm not going to give an opinion either way. I am merely going to point out to you how liberalism, religion, conservatism, and all these other things play a role in Marxist philosophy. And how lately I've been seeing a lot of videos on the people that don't like me about how uh, they're always ranting about these homophobes, or so-called homophobes, I should say, and about how, you know, I'm so despicable because I'm willing to even so much as be in the same room with them because, you know, I see their true personalities, I see what they really want out of life, what they want for society, and they think by a s guilt by association, the fact that I am willing to be around Christian fundamentalists, that makes me just as bad as the Christian fundamentalists. Marxists do not think in terms of A equals B. They think in terms of how can B benefit A. And that's what this comes down to. For a long time, Marxism has basically played footsie with liberalism because it does deteriorate society. And when you want to get rid of capitalism, what is the best way to do that? By deteriorating the society. We live in a very capitalist society. Therefore, you use liberalism to degenerate it. The fact is, um, the family unit is contrary to communist belief. Religion is contrary to communist belief. Not because these things in themselves are contrary to communist belief, but be be because they align more so with capitalism. Capitalism benefits from a strong family unit. When you have children, when you have a loving wife or husband, you have a circle of people around you to inherit your fortune to. When you own land, when you own the means of production, you have people around you that you plan to give it to in the event that you cannot carry it on anymore. That is the point of family. The point, the entire purpose of family is to have someone to inherit your land to. Therefore, since we do not want people to own land, we do not believe in self-ownership, it would make sense for us to want to deteriorate the family unit. But, and this is a big but, to deteriorate the family unit brings about its own problems. When you have sexual debauchery, abortion, uh, you know, decadence, uh, addiction, and all these other qualities that conservatives generally don't like, it doesn't necessarily get rid of capitalism, it just changes capitalism. We live in a society that benefits from addiction, abortion, sexual debauchery, degeneration. Big corporations have used that to their advantage to make people into consumer zombies. And we live in a very rabid materialistic society that no longer needs the family unit anyway. Because most people don't own shit. Therefore, the only people that need to have families are the big corporate owners. Mark Zuckerberg might need to form a family. Moot Knight might need to form a family. Rich the Rapist Buhler might need to form a family in order for their means of production to be inherited to their next of kin. But you, the, the serf, the peasant, you don't need a family. Therefore, they want you to go out and just do whatever because it's irrelevant and it it clouds your judgment. It blinds you to the fact that this elite group of people owns all the means of production and you own absolutely nothing. This is the only real difference between uh, classic conservatism and neoconservatism is the fact that neoconservatism is on board with that philosophy of this conglomerate corporatism and classical conservatives think they can somehow revert back to how many people own the means of production and that way what so we can go back to tyranny of landowners on a smaller scale so we can go back to feudalism is that really any benefit to anybody that's not what I as a Marxist or anybody else wants I think you know well some people might want it conservatives might want it things like that but what I'm trying to say here is Marxists don't think in terms of whether or not uh, gay rights women's rights things like that they think in terms of strategy they think in terms of technique and maneuvering it is like almost like a miniature war game and you're moving your pieces on the board trying to figure out the best position to put them in 
in order to stir up a revolution, in order to stir up the pot that is your Western society and, move, and direct it into a more Marxist perspective. And if your main goal is to get rid of capital ownership, you have to ask yourself, are we as we were a hundred years ago? No, we no longer live under feudal era. We no longer live under, you know, these small brigades of landowners, town to town to town. We live in a multi-conglomerated corporatist state. We live in a society where a few, very few people own everything. Therefore, we cannot think in terms of using liberalism to combat this problem. That does not necessarily mean that conservatism is the answer either. After all, they would simply revert it back to feudalism, and then we would just be back to square one. However, that's, you know, that's why I don't agree usually with the liberal perspective of how we got to defend these people's rights and that people's rights and blah, blah, blah. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Maybe in their mind, that's the way it is. Maybe they truly believe that we have to defend the right to have gay butt sex. We have to defend the right to have abortion. But that's not what it's about to a Marxist. And that's certainly not what it's about to a capitalist. A capitalist wants to own the means of production. A capitalist wants to have sole rulership over everything. A Marxist wants to destroy the capitalist. Therefore, you must ask yourself, what role does liberalism, religion, conservatism, all this other shit play in that chess game? That's, that's what all of this comes down to. And I do not believe that the liberal piece in that chess game holds any bearing on anything anymore. If anything, it is, contra it is uh, counterproductive to Marxist philosophy. In this generation, liberalism is counterproductive to moving toward a Marxist perspective. That's what I bring it down to. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I tend to lean more towards these Christian fundamentalist types. Not because I agree with them, but because they play a more important role in bringing down the bourgeoisie. They play a bigger role in bringing down the moderators than liberals would. Because uh, Christian conservatives understand that society has deteriorated. They understand that um, everything's become this mass marketed consumer uh, hellhole. And that even though they have different intentions, they have different end results they want to achieve, they might be better useful idiots than the liberals ever could be. And some people might disagree with that. Some communists might disagree with me on that. And you are entitled to that disagreement because I might be wrong. Maybe I am not playing the strategy the best way. But that's the way the world works. The world works almost like Warhammer 40K. Not only simply in multitudes of factions all at each other's throats, but the fact is you are like a unit on a board. You have your abilities, you have your stats, and you're moving around trying to work toward the ultimate goal of the game master. And the game master is the people smart enough to use the other people to move them around, or else they'll just move themselves around into oblivion. And uh, that's really all I have to say here, is that people don't understand that politics isn't just, you know, it, it, too much politics is too much like religion. It's too much like this just blind faith in that your way or the highway, as opposed to looking at it as almost like a pragmatic form of biochemistry. That's the way I look at politics. So sociological law, to me, is no different than mixing two chemicals together. To me, it's a science. The fact is, some things work better than others, certain things create other things, certain things destroy other things, and in general, once you understand the mathematics of, you know, political law and human interaction and things, from there, you can manipulate it to make the world more positive in however regard you want to choose to go about that. Of course, nobody knows for sure if it'll be really positive because we're not psychic, but we have at least an idea. And that's what science is all about. As I said before, if scientists knew what they were doing, they wouldn't need to do research. So, 
you know, you have to play around with it. And sometimes that can be self-destructive. That can blow right up in your face. But what other choice do you have? You know? Uh, what, are you just going to blindly walk around in life uncontrolled, un, uh, uninhibited, with no purpose, no drive, no ambition, no nothing? You just float around waiting to die without any concept of how it plays a bigger role in the super organism. Everything you do or don't do is going to affect the super organism. And if you don't learn how to grasp that three-dimensional perspective, someone else will. And then they will simply use you. And then they will be the game master over you, and you may not even realize it. It kind of reminds me of that song, Sweet Dreams. I'll link to it below. Uh, but the point is that that's what it comes down to. The fact is that uh, I believe Christian fundamentalists play a bigger role in destroying capitalism as we know it today than as we knew it yesterday. And I can't say for certain that they would be the best option, but it is certainly the better option than what I see around me. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of how all this works, about how religion works, about how what, what a communist thinks of religion and liberalism and conservatism and things like that, and how if we don't use those things to move towards Marxism, then the capitalists will use it to move even more so towards capitalism. The capitalists are already winning. The best thing the Marxists can do is simply, uh, you know, take whatever strategy they got and just run with it. And that might not be the best way to go about it, but like I said, what other options do you have? So, I hope that enlightens you a little bit. I hope you better understand where I'm coming from on this. Uh, see you later.